You're listening to the Level Flight Podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. And welcome back to the Level Flight Podcast. This is episode 22. Uh, unfortunately, Elliot can't be here with us today, but I still have Brian. Brian, how you doing? Ah, uh, doing all right. Uh, better if my internet would work. Yeah, Brian and I are having some very uh, difficult times with our with our internet. So we're we're gonna try and get as far as we can here. Um, yeah. If there's a, a random cut in the middle of the episode and we come back, that you'll know why. Um, we'll address yeah, it let's if see it how, happens. Oh, we will. We absolutely will. Um, <laughs> But we have we have some games to talk about, um, including what was the biggest game of the year uh, that the Jets ended up losing. But we'll start with the good games, the good news. Yeah. Um, Detroit last Friday, um, great crowd. I was in the building for this one. Original six Friday night game, uh, and the Jets just pumped six goals on the Red Wings. Uh, Bob Irving had a tweet before the game that all the Jets needed to do was score six, and what did they do? They went out and they scored they scored six. six. Um, it always helps getting a non-playoff team on the second night of a back-to-back. Um, but then they went out and destroyed New Jersey, who is a playoff team. But we'll start with Detroit. Um, what did you see from this game? This is the first time they've scored, like they've the first time they've filled the net in a long time. Yeah. Um, obviously, there was the new lines. There was the Shifley move to the wing. Uh, there was the they reunited Ehlers, Nemesikov, Wheeler. Um, what were your overall takeaways from this dominant performance? Well, uh, I'm upset. I, I had to I had to work, so I, I could only mm. see it from a distance on a TV uh, across uh, across the, the place I, where I was. But um, it was nice to consistently see everyone celebrating. Um, but firstly, I'd like to take like uh, uh, you know put credit on the Level Flight podcast because we spent all of last week ripping into the line makeup and how it's the same bunch of guys coming around. So. They changed that after we put the episode out. So clearly they're listening. Clearly it was us. You're welcome. Yeah, so uh, thank you for your listenership, Rick Bonus. Um, <laughs> but yeah. no, I, I thought it was great. Uh, got to see really, I mean, he's he's been in the, the spotlight a lot recently, but Ehlers, fantastic. Just yeah. outstanding. And then he was also really good in the, the Jersey game as well. But um, no, it, it was it was really nice to actually cheer on some some scoring because that has not been something we've been able to do a lot recently so um you picked a, a good game to go to for sure yeah you you talked about watching from a distance um i have a bit of a story to share i was in the building for this one but have you ever had the i don't know what they're called the tots um inside canada life center so it's basically these tater tots um and it's just loaded yeah with just ran, like sour cream um random sauce you know like it's like a loaded mexi fry from taco time yes oh absolutely so it felt like i was watching this game from a distance because before the game i inhaled one of those and i had literally the worst heartburn i think i've ever had in my entire (laughs) life for half the game um so until like the start of the third period i was just sitting there like <gasps> like dying like trying trying to stay alive <laughs> from eating these tots i it was awful it, it tasted great but i really paid the price uh for for the first two periods of this game but hey i was in the building that's all that mattered and i paid yeah. 15 for for the worst heartburn of my life that's that's the story that's the main takeaway i have from this game oh. no but the ehlers nemesikov wheeler line they clearly have chemistry yeah. Um, we saw it when they, they were together, uh, on the Florida trip, um, a long time ago, they beat Florida. And then on the second night of the back-to-back, the Jets beat Tampa. Everyone was like, Whoa, they didn't think they were going to win those games. That line was together, uh, during those games and they yeah. played really well. Um, and yeah, Ehlers two goals in this game. Uh, Nemesikov has been a really good pickup. Um, and uh, there's not much else to say because Detroit's not a very good team. Um, but then you move on to a game where. It is a very good team in New yeah. Jersey. Um, second night of a back-to-back for them as well. But this was a 6 nothing win um, where the Devils scored with 10 seconds left. It's kind of annoying. Hellbuck doesn't yeah. get the shutout. Um, but two goals from Nikolai Ehlers, two points from Pierre-Luc Dubois, two points from Josh Morrissey, two from Blake Wheeler, uh, Barron with a penalty shot goal. Um, 
if you look at the metrics in this game, the Jets actually lost the expected goals battle to New Jersey, but I think it was mainly, and I talked about this a few weeks ago, uh, the Jets get a lead and then they like to sit back and they like to throw the game to Carna Hellebuck and say, bail us out, right? Um, luckily, in this game, they scored six goals and Carna Hellebuck was great, so it didn't matter. Uh, but they got up quick, they got up big, uh, and they sat back, and New Jersey is so fast off the rush. Um, they're so much fun to watch in person. Uh, I was I was saying to one of my friends at intermission, Timo Meyer has the puck in like his own zone, just doing a breakout. And within maybe three or four seconds, he's in the Jets' crease because he passes it up. He's flying. He's sprinting the middle of the ice. They give it back to him. Boom, he's in the crease. Just like that. Like they are the absolutely the fastest team. Uh, I can't wait to watch them in the playoffs because – them versus New York, I think is that's going to be the series. Yeah. That'll be probably the best first round series. Um, so I can't wait. But what were your takeaways? The Jets beat one of the best teams in the NHL six nothing, six one. Sorry. Um, was there anything that really stood out, or was it just like a really solid effort across the board? Yeah, I think for me it was there was there was a shock factor there because it was nice to see them do it against Detroit, but I wasn't anticipating that sort of effort against a team like New Jersey. So like you're looking at a situation where um, a lot of, I think a lot of people were assuming that at the very least it was going to be a very close game, hard fought, you know, you're playing uh, an absolutely electric squad. Um, and even though they were coming off the night before uh, they, they weren't necessarily, you weren't expecting them to come out and, you know, slog around for the entire game. They didn't, but essentially by the time they really started finding things, they were already down by a few. So I, th I think this is a, another huge uh, reason why I think the jets were struggling for so long is they did not get any good starts for, yeah. for quite a while. So they scored fairly early in this one and then never looked back. I think that's key for them is uh, score early and often. And then even if bonus goes to that play not to lose mentality and stops actually trying to score and just starts defending the lead, if you do it early uh, enough and actually put a few on the board, it's easier to deal with. But if you're up only one, uh, it's it's a little bit iffy. If you're not up at all, then it sucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Calgary yeah. game. Case in oh. point with the only being up one, right? Like they get the first goal yeah, and then kind of shelled it out. I mean, they played good in the Calgary game, but we'll get into that later. Yeah. The New Jersey game, this was, again, I wasn't expecting it. After the Detroit game, I was thinking they got to follow it up because this could be, you know, we've seen it in the last month and a bit where the Jets come out and they pummel a team and then they go right back for the next three or four games to being inconsistent, um, failing to finish on their chances, yeah. whatever the case may be. Um, but that wasn't the case. They They came out and dominated. And then in the Calgary game, they really dominated the expected goals battle. You couldn't like Markstrom. You 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 kept saying it that if Markstrom has a few good games, um, Calgary could leapfrog Winnipeg here in the playoffs, and that was one of them. That was yep. like the biggest game, and he had a really big game. Um, but before the the puck even dropped, um, there was a lot a lot of talk because it's been an NHL wide issue. Um, it was Pride Night. Yeah. And every single Winnipeg Jets player wore the jersey, took part in the, the pregame uh, ceremony, and Adam Lowry and Dylan DeMello had some outstanding quotes, um, and Rick Bonus for that matter, mm -hmm. about uh, inclusivity. Um, they want to make uh, Canada Life Center a really inclusive place. They want to make sure it's for everyone. They want to make sure hockey is for everyone and everyone is accepted. Um what were your takeaways from before the puck even dropped the whole pride night thing? Because I feel like we need to talk about that. Cause that that's such a big story around the NHL this year. Um, and I thought the jets really hit it out of the park. Yeah. I, I thought they did a, a great job with everything that they did. They, they always do a very good job at their sort of pregame ceremonies, especially, but even before they make it to the arena, you get a great deal of character and, good character at that from guys like Lowry and um, Morrissey and DeMello all talking about the night itself and what it means. Um, I, I think that, and I know we occasionally like to rag on management and, you know, ownership, you know, either doing too much or not enough. But 
what we've seen here, because there's been, you know, a lot of chatter recently of some character issues uh, over the last few years. Uh, what we've seen here, especially in the outward facing who talks to the media the most sort of situation, that there's a lot of good people in that locker room and you hear it reflected in how they speak about things. Like, I mean, DeMello's really struck me too, because he was talking about specifically what it means to him and uh, how he, in, you know, in the LGBTQ community, uh, he has friends and people who he cares about that he knows that this would be something that he should, you know, really back. Um, I know it means a lot to both of us to, you know, make sure that we, I mean, I put out a long thread on Twitter uh, before yes, the game um, about, you know, different resources. If, if, if you do, if you're listening and you're looking for uh, support or resources, we put a thread out uh, yesterday. I'll probably put another, um, you know, retweet on it today. So it's a little bit higher on the, the feed, but uh, check that out. And that I also just want to make it clear because um, I put this at the end of the thread. Uh, if you're listening to this, and your first instinct is to project intolerance and hate uh, and uh, just terribly disrespectful rhetoric towards uh, an already marginalized community. Get the hell out. I don't we don't want we don't want you listening to our podcast. All right. Uh, and I think that we need to make it clear that in order for us to be allies in this situation, we need to chat about these things. We're not just uh, a podcast that talks specifically about the games we don't want to be that we have uh i mean it's not uh, obviously the largest platform but we have a platform nonetheless and we feel it's our responsibility to you know connect these things that are meaningful to a lot of people this is something that the you know the the community is very appreciative of when it happens which is why it's so disappointing to see teams abandoning it entirely um, I know Montreal this morning came out and said that they uh, uh, they will still be wearing them, but there will be a player who is not uh, taking part in warmups. I think that's totally fine. You let those who want to wear it wear it because that shows that they're you know meaningful allies. They they want to make sure that someone feels support. That also shows that there are certain players who don't agree with that, and I think that part of the consequences. You could, they are more than welcome to have their own belief systems. They're welcome to put that out there. But the whole thing about, um, you know, the freedom of expression and the freedom of your beliefs is you are not excluded to being criticized for them. It's yeah. that is part of that. It's a, it's a give and take thing there. Uh, you, you can come out and say terrible things, but if people say something back to you, you're not allowed to be upset because they don't agree with you. Uh, that's just how it, that's how it works. So recently, obviously, there's a lot of players who have, uh, you know, decided I'm not wearing them. Some teams have caved entirely, saying that they're not going to wear them at all. Um, a lot of the reasoning behind it, it feels like they're scapegoating a lot, and I don't like that. Um, but no, I, I feel like the Jets handled it beautifully in the sense that, first of all, great to see that everyone was wearing it. Mm -hmm. um, and they also said it was a team decision. So what's nice about that is clearly there was uh talking on it um saw a bunch of you know nonsense comments that i'm not going to put names to because i don't want to give them the light of day but uh saying that uh you know oh, it's terrible to see that the the team is forcing this on the players lowry came out and, and you know bonus and all of them came out and said that they decided it as a, as a group that they needed to do to do this yeah. so that's just them making forced this decision. on anyone yeah yeah nothing yeah. was forced <laughs> as as we've seen already especially as of late if a player doesn't want to wear it they don't they don't have to they just won't participate in warm-ups and that's that's on them and so yeah. uh yeah i that's a lot of my thoughts on it i might build on this a little bit more but i'd love to hear what you think about it and you had a great tweet about because we're yeah. we're in a very unique situation um <laughs> which connor will touch on more where a lot of the reasoning behind what we've heard is backed by, and this is a very sensitive talk for people, and we understand that, but it's backed by their personal religious beliefs. And the two of us, and Elliot as well, who's not with us today, um, we attend Canadian Mennonite University. We are constantly surrounded by discussions of literature uh, regarding theology and biblical, uh, you know, research and everything. Um, 
so we're not unfamiliar with the topic this is not us you know projecting or anything we we are familiar and experienced with uh, uh many you know religious texts and um speaking on this specifically so a lot of what our issues you know stem from are almost using it as a, a way to you know mask the fact that you're just being intolerant and we don't appreciate that and a lot of what we've learned is rooted in love and community yep. and making sure that people feel welcome in places that uh you know you don't want people to be persecuted because of who they are as a person um and i know you you tweeted this out but connor i'd love you to talk about your experience at the faith and sport gala yeah so uh it was it's the the title of the gala is pro sports and faith uh jets bombers players um lots of them too um uh, attend this event for their team chaplain um and that serves as his salary uh that's how they pay his salary you know they got the dinner um that you can bid on sports mer memorabilia whatever um it's a great night the important part that i took away from it and i tweeted this out like you said was that players like shifley players like morrissey players like lowry uh went up on stage and talked about how about their faith that's the whole point of the gala is willie jefferson went on stage jackson jeffcoat went on stage they all yeah. went up and talked about their faith um and they're very devout christians they're very connected to this and they still wore the pride jersey um i just wanted to share that because i found it interesting that some players around the league are sitting out to their christian beliefs and that's okay like we said whatever that's on you you can be criticized for it if you don't want to do it, go right ahead. So you can be you you can choose not to wear the jersey, but like you said, Brian, you, that's your choice, and you're going to be criticized for it, uh, one way or another. I just wanted to provide this example of players who are devout Christians, um, and are very connected to their faith, who still chose to wear the pride jersey. Um, and then Lowry came out, and the comments were amazing about how inclusive he wants the building to be, and how hockey is for everyone, right? Um, these are examples of guys that are attending a dinner and talking about their faith um, to raise money for their team chaplain. Who's there for them to talk about their faith. That's what that's, that's his job on the team is he's there for the players to go to and talk about their faith. Um, and they're, they're still wearing the pride Jersey. They're still being inclusive. Um, and the issue that this stems like where this, where this comes from for me is I want I I don't I hate to single them out because there's a lot of players that are choosing to sit out, etc. But Eric Stahl of the Florida Panthers, he chose not to wear it due to his Christian beliefs. And then during the game, someone went back and looked at his time in Montreal and he wore a pride jersey when he was a member of the Montreal Canadiens. I don't know when it was, I believe it was like 2017 or 2018. It was it was a few years ago. Yeah. And then when he was asked about it after the game, he said, oh, I never wore a pride jersey in Montreal. No, I never did. There's video and photographic evidence of yeah. you wearing a pride jersey in Montreal. But now, but now, since Ivan Provorov set out to beliefs that are, again, his choice, now you can, you, can, you, you, you can scapegoat the whole night and say, you know what, I don't want, I don't want to take part in that because of my Christian beliefs. But then th th that's why I wanted to bring this up because – there are players that have done it in the past, aren't doing it now due to Christian beliefs, but then half the players on the Jets were attending a night and talking about how devout Christians they are. It just it 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 seems very, very uh, like confusing to say because it, yeah. you you see all these players sitting out to Christian beliefs, and then when I go to a dinner and all these players are saying all these things, I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense, and then they all took place in pride night and it was it was never like a thing and then yeah. i could just never see um josh morrissey who spoke or Ad adam lowry is the best example because he i guess i uh, did morrissey speak too i forget if he spoke but lowry spoke in his quotes mike mike mcintyre posted all of them he's probably the best example because he spoke there um and he spoke and he took both sides of it he spoke about how devout a christian he is and he spoke about how he wants hockey to be more inclusive you both can both can happen at the same time um and here is proof that i was there this is kind of a shameless plug because i want to wow. share this photo but if you're on youtube uh 
there's me with Brendan Dillon. So friend of the pod, <laughs> friend of the pod Brendan Dillon. That is my proof that I was that I was there that night. He was one of the players that was there. You just wanted to show that photo. I just wanted to show that photo. Of course. You have a photo with Brendan Dillon. It just yeah. happened to be the same night. Anyways, tons of bombers players, tons of Jets players. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to share that story on Twitter um so that people could get the other side of the story because you hear a lot of oh these um really these people that are really connected to their faith are sitting out due to their due to their Christian beliefs. So I wanted to share a story where there are devout Christians who are also still taking part in the pride night festivities. Um, I wanted to share that story because you hear a lot of the other one. Um, and this was kind of like the good side of it or like the, the positive uh, light where both can be true, right? Both, both of these players can do um, all of the Jets players can do these, these things. Right. So before the, the puck even dropped, we, we covered a lot there, but I think it was necessary um and if you don't have anything else to jump in we can move on to the calgary game but if you want one final word you can go ahead but we'll we'll move on to the calgary game once you're you're yeah i just wanted just to say one thing too where it's just like you said it very well there where it's not mutually exclusive like you you can't Mm -hmm. be someone of faith and also uh support the uh, lgbtq plus community just to quickly wrap up my thoughts on it is you know i grew up in you know the church i uh, go to a Christian university, and basically the the gist of things that I've come out of here with is uh, choose to love and not hate, and that seems like the basis of what I learned. So uh, pretty simple, yeah. And seems it, pretty simple. That's the thing, and I know a lot of people are just along the whole lines of, well, I'm not hating, I just don't want to wear the jersey. Choosing not to do the bare minimum and support a community that is struggling to feel accepted in sport. Uh, it's not showing love. I'll tell you that much. Um, Mm -hmm. so no, just wear, wear a Jersey for 20 minutes, uh, just to show that someone, uh, is who may not feel welcome is a little more acceptance. That's it. That's all. That's all that needs to be done. It's not, it's not some big thing where you're, you know, going out and doing something so insane. It's you're wearing uh, a piece of clothing. (sighs) Uh, yeah uh anyway we, that's a good way to to wrap up we'll we'll move on to the the calgary game now um the, the on ice the after warm-ups um the, the, they lose 3-1 yeah um they win the expected goals battle jacob markstrom has a great game um but in the biggest game of the year it really doesn't matter who win who should have won it matters who who won um and that calgary's loss to chicago on what was that tuesday night that made it not as important but you still couldn't like it it could have been the the nail in the coffin if the jets beat the flames in regulation last night it would have been over um it maybe nashville could have caught them but with a game in hand, and they would have been, I think, four points up on Calgary with a game in hand, it would have been over. Um, now, Calgary wins in regulation. They're tied in points. The Jets have a game in hand. But as we know, the Jets haven't done well with games in hand recently. So we don't know how that will go. Um, but yeah, what were your overall takeaways from this game? Because now the Jets are in a very, very tight race. If it could get even closer, it is now um, in the wild card race in the West. But what were your takeaways from the 60 minute game? Yeah, uh, my biggest thing was they looked so good in the first. And then for the rest of the game, they looked like the team that were on the second half of the back, or the back to back there. Um, yep. So it's just, there was very little urgency in a game that essentially could have solidified a playoff spot. And. They come out, they play great in the first. You think, oh, maybe this is the team that we've seen the last couple games. Uh, they're fun again. Uh, and then they had nothing left in the tank for the last two periods. They were playing not to lose, which I've said before, hate it. Uh, yeah. You should always try. And, uh, you know, like, that's the thing. They give up the, the tying goal. It's called back. Then they give up another one. Uh, to actually tie it. And then from that point on, they, it was like they just, there was nothing. Yeah, no, it was, it was not great. 
Um, Hellebuck was okay. Uh, there wasn't like, I, you can't really pin this on him to, per se. Um, I saw a lot of people doing that on Twitter after, which is why I'm saying this, this game isn't really Hellebuck's fault. It's the story we've seen a million times with the Jets the last month and a bit. Uh, they generate a bunch of chan- uh, chances, but guess can't what? Finish. They can't finish him. Uh, yeah, the Jets have been great in the expected goals battle and the, oh, they should have won. Uh, but then in the biggest game of the year, you actually you have to actually win. And yeah. they did not. Um, as simple as that, I th- th- a few things that I want to come out of this game, going into uh, Nashville on Saturday, San Jose on Monday, and then the last two games against Minnesota and Colorado. I want the Lions to stay the same because they're generating so much right now. Do not change the lines. Connor uh, Dubois Shifley is doing fine. I talked about how much chemistry the Ehlers line has. Um, The third line with Nino plays really heavy. Uh, Morgan Barron is providing a bit of a spark from the fourth line. Um, Don't change them. Don't change them. Keep them going. You're going to pummel Nashville as long as UC Soros doesn't play out of his mind, which Again, uh, the Jets can get goalie, right? Like th- we've seen yeah. this happen before. But these Lions, since they got put to- put together against Detroit, they have outplayed, like they have played extremely well together. So don't change them. Secondly, yeah. and you already alluded to it, the philosophy of like sitting back has to change. Yeah, It's the, the, the one I talked about in the Arizona game that they won a few weeks ago where they go up early, they sit back and they go, take, the, take it, Hellbuck. Please win us the game. Um, and they were up one nothing against Calgary. And it again, yeah, two days rest. Calgary played last night and lost to the worst team in the NHL. Yeah. Um, good first period, great first period. You got to jump on them early, right? Teams on a back to back. But you're you're coming off two days rest. You gotta you gotta push through and finish that game out. Um, yeah. and they didn't. And now now the next two games against non-playoff opponents are huge because you have a game in hand on Calgary. And you have to take advantage of it because the last two games of the year are Minnesota, Colorado. And if you don't take care of business, business against Nashville and San Jose, I don't like their chances. Minnesota's the second night of a back to back nonetheless. Yep. And Minnesota's had the, had the Jets number. And then Colorado is Colorado. So yeah. you got to take care of business, business against, I can't say that word, Nashville and San Jose. <laughs> You've got the two tougher central division opponents on the road to end the year. And you can't be behind going into those last two games or else the season is over and they're going to miss the playoffs. Um, yeah. But yeah, unless you have anything else, we can, we can wrap up. You're mentioning those non-playoff teams. Do you know what they're going to be doing in the next little bit, Connor? What are they going to be doing, Brian? They're going to be golfing like the best golfers in the world are right now at Augusta national uh, at the mm. masters. Um, so from T to green, the best place to go to get in on all the action happening on the links is DraftKings Sportsbook. This week, new customers will receive an odds boost to add plus 1,000 to any pre-tournament wager up to $10 on any golfer to win. So, for example, if you're a new customer and you see a golfer uh, to win the tournament at plus 1,000 odds, DraftKings will boost that golfer to plus 2,000 odds for your shot at a bigger payout. DraftKings will be featuring parlays and odds boosts all tournament long, so be sure to check the DraftKings Sportsbook app every day before the tournament starts to see what they have in store. Did you know there hasn't been a a repeat winner at the Masters since Tiger Woods in 2001-2002? Is Scotty Scheffler the one to do it this year? Maybe. I don't know. He looked good in the par three, Uh, but we'll see uh, what happens coming up this week. Uh, Maybe he's the next one. Maybe we're going to see a new winner. Maybe we're going to see a first-time winner. We don't know. But download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code uh, THPN and boost your odds during this weekend's tournament. That's code THPN only on DraftKings Sportsbook. The Jets hopefully won't be golfing. Um, Hopefully not. At least not for the first round. Um, It would be nice to talk about the playoffs on this podcast. Don't want to be talking about their golfing habits. I do not. No. Yeah. I don't want to be talking about other teams in the playoffs. I don't want to be talking about Calgary's series against Vegas or yeah. like Minnesota. Uh, yeah, but, but no, we'll, it's a big week coming up here. Um, huge week, yeah. Well, and we'll, I just want to quickly touch on it yeah. before either we end or yeah. one of our Wi-Fi's give out. Um, yeah. I'm worried about this. Obviously, you got, you got the beat, uh, you know, the Preds and, uh, and the Sharks. Wild and Avs are battling for the first spot in the central. 
They yeah. like the top three teams in the division are separated by only a few points. Yeah. Um, they might not be in favor of resting their players. They might be going full on try and you know get any point that they can. So those aren't just going to be you know easier matchups because it's late in the season. You're going to get two teams trying to get that first overall seed so they get a lower playoff matchup. I mean, yeah. if I'm one of them, I'd rather play us than say, uh, you know, the Wild and Col- Wild and uh, Avalanche, you know, play each other or play the Stars. I'd rather play the Jets if I were them. And like, obviously, they're going to be battling it out. They know that that is what could happen if they beat us. So, uh, next four games are absolutely terrifying to me, uh, yeah. especially because we can't beat the Sharks. Yeah. The Sharks have the Jets number. Uh, so do the Wild. And th- those two games come on a back to back. So that'll be a rough, that might be a rough uh, 24 hours for, yeah. for us. But this time next week, today is Thursday. This time next week, the Jets will be playing their final game against yeah. the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, we might record Wednesday next week, um, unless the Colorado game is literally like a win and you're in scenario, then we'll wait. Uh, until the Friday because that'll be pretty important. Check out yeah. our Twitter. Um, check out our socials. We'll keep you updated on when we're going to record next week. But um, as it stands right now, I think we'll be recording on the Wednesday, and those we'll be talking about Nashville, San Jose, and Minnesota. And uh, the tone of this podcast could be oh boy, very. It could be very interesting because the Jets could be again. The Colorado game could not matter at that point. If the Jets yeah. lose three straight, uh, they're not going to make the playoffs, right? You, you they, they got to win. They got to win. Uh, this is this is it. This is the final stretch. This is crunch time. Um, we battled through some very difficult Wi-Fi issues today, but we made it. If you're if you're going to be watching line. this on YouTube, which is probably going to come out a little bit later now because there's a lot of editing that has to be done, very creative yeah. editing. Uh, yeah. You're going to see a lot of hard cuts. Uh, I might try and put some stuff in there to make it a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, um, you probably won't notice it as much in the audio version, um, just cause it's a little bit easier to work with the audio version. You might hear us restate our points yeah. because when we come back from a Wi-Fi cut, w- me and you are like, okay, where did we leave off? Okay, we have let's no just clue what we're doing. This. So yeah, we're, we're, you'll see the audio version might be a mess as well. You might hear us restate a point like three times in a row, just because the Wi-Fi kept cutting. But just to illustrate this, around. <laughs> yeah, just to illustrate this a little bit before we go, um, yeah. the recording right now is listed at 57 minutes. We're probably this is going to be a short podcast, be like 25 it's probably, minutes. It's like 20, 25 like 20, minutes. So yeah. there's a lot of time that we spent in chaos. So uh, hopefully you enjoy the, the shortened version because it took us a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's a very busy week of school for us. It's the last week. Um, yeah. It's it's a it's it's it, we wanted a shorter episode this week uh, just because we we don't have much time and we were battling the wi-fi yeah uh, but here we are we made it to the end so thank you to everyone for sticking around um check us out next week it should be a very interesting episode whether yeah. or not the jets are in or they're out or battling still somehow on the wednesday we will find out um So from Brian and myself, thank you for listening, and we will see you next week. Go Jets. Go Jets. You've been listening to the Level Flight Podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network.